Hmm. Oh, hi there. Well, did it again. Right and low Saxony. Yes, I am. Hmm. All right, spring has us, spring really has us. I was thinking about uh, doing something about spring tobacco, but well, to be honest, well, two or three tobaccos came off, hit the market. Well, I'm, pretty, I'm not pretty convinced, well, well you know, oh, those different aromatics, perhaps uh, if I have enough chance, I'm gonna show you that. But today I have something different for you. But first of all, well, my apology, uh, been a while, been a while, yeah, well, you know, you can already, uh, already guess, I think, so for obvious reasons, so, uh, crisis hit us, <laughs> university wasn't prepared at all, uh, uh -huh. to go digital, um, Oh, we were unprepared for that, be sure. Mm. So, well, anyway, President, well, not, not President Trump, but President of my university gave us a little speech. Um, conclusion pretty much was everyone is on his own. <laughs> See what you can do. Good luck. Mm. So what? What did I do? Uh, well, I did what what I always do. So I did videos. So uh, <laughs> well, you, you can imagine. So, but I don't know. Giving seminars, uh, five or six seminars a week, uh, all by doing videos, uh, answering all the email stuff coming in uh, from I don't know, two hundred something students. So. <laughs> Well, you can imagine now. Well, I don't want to complain, so uh, don't get me wrong. So there, I know there are many guys out there suffering really uh, on the crisis. So the uh, economy is going low, and uh, you know, just uh, just terrible. And on well, there's another part that's really terrible. So I don't know for, for me. So that's my my social life. So I don't know, no meeting up with the friends, uh, and I don't know. Fancy Hotel Atlantic, uh, smoking cigars and pipes and so on. No, no nothing. Uh, no meetup at Ronnie's. That's wrong. Uh, there was a meetup at Ronnie's uh, last Saturday. So we we yeah we talked and we, we said yeah let's meet up at Ronnie's in front of Ronnie's. So we stand in in front of Ronnie's shop. So uh, with I don't know distance two meters between everyone. So I don't know four or five guys and smoking cigar. <laughs> right on the street in front of the shop. Wow. Never thought I'm gonna see something like that. Mm. I don't even know if that's legal. Uh, well, well, I guess. Uh, so we, we had our distance. Uh, <laughs> so nothing wrong with having a cigar in front of the shop, I guess. Uh, government should give us that. All right. Um, yeah, well, uh, that's not time travel here, uh, and that's not that's not how the locals live today. So uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, that's a pit house, pit house. So we are here, and uh, that's an old Saxon side here. Uh, well, Saxons used to live here uh, uh, two thousand years ago, up to. Uh, 
1,300 years or 1,200 years ago. So uh, there's an old graveyard uh, nearby, and well, old settlement here that even goes down to to Bronze Age. Right? Even even Bronze Age people used to live here, and um, this is so uh, the graveyard. This is an old uh, Saxon uh, graveyard. And uh, yeah, well, they, they burned uh, their dead, and, and that was that wasn't that easy. So uh, well, you know, if we find remains um, on graveyards burned, we can we have a pretty good idea um, from which time they are. So that's because um, people use different methods to burn their dead, and. The bones, to get the bones cracked in a fire, you really need a lot of temperature. I don't know, it's up to 800 or something. So you can't reach that with a normal fire. You can't just throw somebody in a, I don't know, a campfire uh, and that's it. Uh, it's very complicated um, to, to get the fire right, uh, to reach those temperatures, uh, to get the bones cracked and really to burn them down. So and, and from that we, we always know we, we have an idea uh, what's what's the time scale. So now we uh, we know about that. So that that is about 400 500 here, and the graveyard. So I think it's about uh, 500 uh, 500 bodies. Um, so 500 graves, and even I don't know uh, several horse uh, graves too. And five dogs, if I'm correct. Yeah, precious dogs. So, well, th th those dogs. Uh, well, we guess uh, those dogs were pretty much company for for well for the owners. Yeah, noblemen perhaps, but we shouldn't be wrong about that. So, a graveyard is about I don't know 500 uh, individuals, but. The graveyard, so that that was used over centuries. So that means that was a graveyard for a small community. So I don't know, 60 people, we guess. So very small village. And thing is, we didn't we didn't really find the village. Uh, so just the graveyard. So why is the graveyard still there? So the reason is that was uh, well, that's just a, a sand hill. A sand hill, and they buried that in the sand hill, and there was, wasn't any use for that. So you can't use that for agriculture, or farming, or whatever. So uh, there that, that wasn't really some need for that. So, but when that changed during 20th century, and they used the sand, and there was a uh, a brick maker, a brick maker nearby. And he was the first one, I think, who used the sand. And after that, so they went grave after a grave. So, and then even back in the 50s, they just get the sand out and destroyed many graves, many graves. So, uh, well, after the war, that was not priority one uh, to, to watch out for 2,000 year old graves. So, anyway, uh, today it's protected, of course. So I, I, I gonna I show you uh, show you around a bit, uh, show you some some pictures of, of these hills. But these hills are not, not really hills; they're graves. So anyway, uh, I thought that could be a, a good place to go out and talk about uh, a new tobacco. And there, there is a new tobacco on the market. Uh, interesting stuff, really. Uh, worth a look. Uh, that's what we love. So that would be Mac Barons, Rustica, Rustica. So, Rustica. Well, you know, if you know the channel, you know that there were several uh, videos um, when Mac Barron came out with something new, and I was complaining about that. Not about the tobacco itself, but that Mac Barron came out with the tobacco first. 10,000 kilometers uh, from Europe, and without giving us the chance to to hit that. Well, on this time, uh, was 
three months ago, I think, company representative, Mr. Lacher, you know, he's a great guy. Uh, I have to do another interview with him. Um, so Mr. Lacher uh, told Ronnie to tell me that there's a new tobacco coming up and uh, they're going to come up in Germany first. So, <laughs> I was laughing about that. So, and, and they did, they kept the promise, so, I guess. Mm. So, what is this tobacco about? So, you see, the tin is black and there's a reason for that, I guess, so. It's really proper to use a black tin for, for this tobacco, I guess. Yeah, Rustica, Rustica, what is Rustica? What, what's the name? Well, you know, the different tobaccos in the world. Virginia, Burley, and so on. But they are older tobaccos. They're not really older, and uh, I don't know, in a sense, uh, that was before the Virginia, whatever. But old tobaccos, they're no longer really used. At least not by large industries or for pipe tobacco. So, Rustica, this is a certain kind of tobacco. Let's, let's put it there. It's not as tall as the normal plant, so the Virginian tobacco, the bird tobacco, uh, very different uh, in, its, in its character. And in Germany, we know this tobacco as um, Bauern tobacco, so farmer's tobacco, we call that. And in early modern times, this tobacco was very common, even here in Germany. And, and you, you can still buy that, uh, so the plant, and grow that on your own, your garden or whatever, uh, and yeah, do something with that. So the reason is, this tobacco is uh, quite resilient to, I don't know, disease and, and everything. So I think that's that's what, why it was really, uh, yeah, it was really common, uh, but for the simple men. Uh, for the farmers, and that they like to use that. And there's another reason. So, for those guys who were up to the nicotine, well, <laughs> rustic tobacco, up to nine times as much nicotine. Up to. Uh, doesn't mean uh, every plant has this uh, this volume of nicotine, but it's up to nine times uh, nicotine of of normal Virginia or whatever. So let's just say it's a lot. Uh, and it's not so, and that was a certain point, and that was centuries ago, when they really um, got into the Virginia and, and had a, a good use for the Virginia, and then later on for the Burley, and then after the, so before the Second World War, Burley was very dominant, and even after the Second World War, and then in the 70s when all the Danish pipe tobacco came up, so all uh, all changed, and uh, that was coming back to the Virginia style uh, tobaccos, the more Virginia dominated tobaccos, and uh, what well, up up to now with all the, the fancy methods and, and so on that we use. So, so in this world. The rustic tobacco, this old-fashioned uh, farmer's tobacco, uh, very simple tobacco in many ways, but complex, interesting on its own, but very heavy. So there seems to be um, no place for, for that tobacco anymore. But, and, and that's what I really like about McBaron, so, um, I don't know, an ambitious company in many ways. So uh, when they up to something and they, they do in the effort, and they really do, so that's not easy. That's not easy, um, I, I can really imagine. So, because this tobacco that is no longer produced in, in amounts for, for industrial use and so on in the Western world, and that's not the normal way to go to, and you don't pick up the phone and uh, yeah ask your normal distributor or whatever who comes up, comes uh, up with the tobacco and you do. So, it's an effort to go there for an idea, for the idea. So, let's remember this old tobacco. 
let's bring new life to man. And that's what I really appreciate. That's what I really appreciate. And, well, we all know, McBaron is a company, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to lose too, 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 just too many good words about McBurn. So, don't you think I'm a, uh, I'm a representative or something? Uh, but this company, I think, in, in several videos got uh, a fair share of critics uh, <laughs> when it comes to me. But anyway, so they do things carefully and thoughtfully. We all know that. So, most of the time, Quality isn't something that we don't have to discuss when it, when it comes to, to these tobaccos. So uh, that's mainly that's mainly a point of if you just like it or not. A question of taste, just. So okay, long talk. And, uh, anyway, let's go to the tobacco. I, I don't know. I let myself drive away. Uh, so I got the tobacco in my Ali Berinci or one of my Ali Berinci's. Well, some of you guys are always asking, so I can show you that. So nice, nice style. All right, I'm already smoking on it. Uh, I'll show you the tobacco. Yeah, I show you tobacco and then I read the tin description. Normally it's the other way around, so anyway. In the times of crisis, everything is a bit different. We all have to adapt, so. Hope you can see that. Come on camera, don't be shy. So, you see, yeah, it really fits the tin color. It's really dark. Give you a close up, try that. So, one guy mentioned, and then I think that was the 80s child, saw a video by the 80s child, that this the 80s child, by the way, uh, a German presenter, German presenter, uh, he's really good, he knows his stuff, and I think he also has, uh, I don't know, English subtitles or something, if I'm correct, so worth a shot, mm. anyway, there's good videos, so he mentioned that this is really thin, and he's, he's correct on that. It's really thin. So, I don't absolutely agree uh, that that is, I don't know, never saw something like that, or I think there are uh, several Virginias. Uh, I don't know, even the Richmond, I think. It's also very thin cut, but this is very thin. Mm, and I think there's a reason for that. Tobacco uh, has good use. Uh, for, for these really thin cut, tell you why. So humidity, well, it's pretty humid, pretty humid. But if you touch that, it's it's nothing out of the ordinary uh, when it comes to all those McBaron flags. Mm. So first whip, yeah. There are many guys that they detect, I don't know, 20 different uh, things uh, when they take a whiff. If you know the channel, you know I'm, I'm not that kind of guy. Mm. Uh, I don't know, I normally stick to, to three or four. So this is really earth. It is earthy uh, at it, as it gets. And that's, if, if you're here, if you see a landscape, you have an idea. So really earthy. Old wood, dark wood, perhaps a hint of leather. And I think the 80s child mentioned uh, dark bread, and oh, that's that's correct. But I don't know, there are not many places in the world uh, they have so many different breads. So uh, for a German presenter can always uh, describe with, I don't know, 30 different kinds of bread, and that's. Uh, appropriate uh, sometimes but yeah so it's really wood it's dark it is deep and with a touch of sweetness not as sweet as 
let's say the the bold Kentucky. But and that's the thing, we already talk in same league here. Bold Kentucky. I don't know, brown rope number four. Don't get me wrong, not one comes to the taste in the end, so the taste is different, but it's the same league when it comes to the strength, to the nicotine hit. All right. Let me go back and I'll tell you what they say about the tobacco. So they say I have to translate that, that's in German. So that's the disadvantage. Uh, by not getting the tin uh, from overseas, so I have to translate that. So to do this uh, very heavy uh, pipe tobacco, uh, we use Nicotiana tobacco and Nicotiana rustica. So Nicotiana tobacco, that's that's the Virginia and all usual tobaccos well, we know from pipe tobacco to get things short. But uh, the rustica. Well, rustica is still used in, um, I don't know, in uh, Central America, uh, in Russia, for cigarettes, for example. And uh, those cigarettes, those Russian cigarettes, they use the rustica. This is really famous. Uh, those are famous cigarettes. But if I'm correct, they're no longer, uh, so since several years, they're no longer uh, allowed in the European Union because of the nicotine. <laughs> so that's just. There is a limit. Well, you know there is a limit. But I guess that's different uh, when it comes to pipe tobacco. Um, all right. Uh, so they say, um, so we use these different uh, uh, tobaccos. Uh, since the beginning of uh, pipe smoking in 17th century, uh, this, this kind of tobacco uh, was, was used uh, not very often is pressed hot just to uh, to uh, let the aroma uh, uh, to save the aroma of the tobacco and to uh, melt those different aromas uh, into each other yeah that's the hot pressing method that we know from McBaron and that's that's good there's no there's no doubt about that so that's the tobacco mixture rustica very very heavy high level nicotine tobacco very interesting with a little violet note a little violet note yeah these floral notes so the rustica is known for for its its little floral notes but you can't really detect that when you uh or i can't i can't detect it when when i when i smell the tobacco in the tin but that's different if you go for the tobacco and uh, light it up and especially, let's say, after the first third of the bowl. So what about smoking this tobacco? Well, be careful with that. I think McBurn, they say on their website or whatever, um, you don't want to smoke that, uh, this with an empty stomach. And they are right. They're right. Let me just relay. Yeah. Mm. Talking relights. I need a lot of relights when it comes to this tobacco. And that's the first issue I'm talking about. Mm. And I think that's, that may be, I'm not sure, but that may be a reason why they used a, a thin cut. So if they would have used a, a broader cut, so I don't know, it would be even more difficult uh, yeah, to, let, to get the tobacco to stay lit. Uh, even on this condition. So I have seen, I don't know, 80s child, uh, uh, recommend it to, to let the dry out but well you know that's not my politics so um, I go for the tobacco the way the company presents the tobacco and yeah I want the tobacco ready uh, oh no not to dry out to rehydrate or whatever so 
you can give a dry out. So, so I tried that. So um, I gave, gave it a pretty heavy dry out, and the result uh, that wasn't <laughs> the result wasn't convincing, uh, to say the least. So the tobacco got harsh. So that's my guess. Like keep the tobacco with a good uh, humidity because in all other ways you uh, I don't know the tobacco gets even stronger, gets harsh notes, bitey, and so on. So what you want to do is uh, be careful about rubbing out the tobacco. Try to uh, yeah, try to get the tobacco lit carefully, otherwise you get a nick hit. And let it stay lit. And just smoke it, I don't know, carefully. Don't go to go with too much heat on the tobacco, otherwise you, you, you get a serious nick hit. Uh, even then, first few times I smoked the tobacco, I couldn't really finish the ball. <laughs> Believe me, I'm used to a lot of nicotine, uh, so uh, I'm only not the guy getting green in the face uh, uh, from some nicotine. But I don't know, this tobacco, after two thirds of the bowl coming just reaching the, the last third of the bowl, I felt some kind of dizzy. There's just few tobaccos mm, giving, me, giving me that kind of feeling. And that would be uh, some of the Mozek stuff. So Mozek's dark ropes, though this is heavy stuff. Um, these dark, dark ropes from Mozek. Um, H.H. Bull, Kentucky. Also, last third of the ball, and of course, brown number four, the rope. Uh, so, yeah, Samuel Gavith rope, brown number four. So, and that's a tobacco that also needs a lot of relights, and every relight, every relight is a nick hit. So, yeah, so but those tobaccos are different to this tobacco. So let's let's not talk about the issues too much. This tobacco provides really interesting notes. So for me, it's rather a calic, close to cigar, even if it's not cigar, but it's close to cigar because it's rather a calic with a slightly sweetness in the back. It is not as as deep and sweet as let's say bold Kentucky. And after the first third of the bowl, you reach these really interesting um, floral notes combined with wood and leather, and perhaps even a hint of raisin. Um, I'm not sure if that goes back to reach the, uh, the rustic tobacco, but, uh, but the rustic kind, you, you feel that. That isn't just a, I don't know, a slightly portion to, to call that rustic and that's it, but it is really about this uh, this tobacco, this old fashioned ancient tobacco, uh, which is still in use, uh, but just uh, in, in very few regions of the world and not for industrial pop tobacco. And so the question may be, is there, is there a place for this tobacco in this world? And I think obviously it is. See, because, and that's, that's what I really like about McBaron. They have the courage uh, to do something like that. And this is obviously, obviously not a project to, I don't know, sell a huge amount of tobacco and get rich. Uh, that's, I don't think that's rather unlikely, but so and even more, I really appreciate the effort uh, uh, they do and the courage they have to uh, come up with a product like that. So really interesting and um, yeah, you should give it a shot. It's really worth a shot, but be careful with that. So I think they even recommend to use a small pipe uh, for that. And well, the reason is not the kind of tobacco how it's uh, produced because we all know that 
flake the backhouse. Normally, like to be in a in a, in a wider uh, pipe, so let's say a pan, or whatever, so that the flake can expand and so on. So it's normally not recommended to use a small pipe uh, for flake. So, but they do it, I guess, because well, this is an espresso, if you want to say so. It's not meant to be smoked all day long. Perhaps if you, I don't know, if you're pretty, pretty heavy on nicotine, so uh, you, you, you have a cigarette smoker or whatever, and you don't find your need satisfied normally in pipe smoking, uh, you can go for that. <laughs> you won't need any cigarettes anymore. That's my guess. But I don't know if your problems are really solved by that. So for me, pipe smoking is not about the nicotine. Uh, it just comes with that. So anyway, you see, I have to relight again. Well, you might say, yeah, well, you talk too much. So yes, you're right. Mm. Anyway, so you see, it's it's not not that easy for me uh, to let that stay lit. Mm. So is it recommended? I think so. Uh, and if it's just to, to try out something, a greeting from, from the past, or just to, I don't know, encourage other company to do something, <laughs> something interesting. Uh, anyway, what's the price? So what are we talking about? What are we up to? Uh, it's 50 gram, as always, and it's 12 euros here in Germany. That's a fair price, really fair price. Oh, well, on one hand, you can say, well, Rustica, that's a cheap tobacco. <laughs> we used to be in the old days. Mm, that was one reason uh, why, why the tobacco uh, was still in use. But, uh, well, nowadays that's different, you know. You have to get that on the market, you have to prepare that and so on. So I'm 12 years for, for um, uh, really unconventional, extraordinary tobacco. That's not too much. All right, guys. I think that's pretty much it. I've well, forgotten something. Just talking about the, the smell, the taste, the issues. Uh, I don't have to mention that. It, I was not, not ghosting or any, anything, so that's I don't know. That's understood, I think. All right, guys. Mm. Do some footage from the graveyard and uh, hope you all are well. Hang in, guys. We gotta get through this. I don't know. Those are the times to uh, to think about your I don't know your ancestors and so on. And so what what they have been through. So uh, I think we, we well. It's all right to complain, but all right. That they they have suffered a lot. That doesn't mean we don't have any right to complain about anything. So uh, that's for sure. But um, just shows us that uh, we can get we can get through this, and and we will for sure. So hang in, guys, uh, and uh, we will. And take care, but well, um, perhaps see you again. I just need another relight.
Well, look at that. <laughs> Just in case of emergency, we're safe. Oh, can you see this? Oh, it's all graves. All graves. Whole forest here. Look at that. Do you see that? Oh, there's a shack right here in the forest. Let's go have a look. Let's have a look. There might be some, I don't know. There's some hillbillies. I'm living here in the forest. Oh no. <laughs> you see that? I'm doing some target practice here. Let's take a closer look. Let's see what we're up against. You'd think they're holding someone hostage. Take a closer look on that. All right, looks like the, someone's doing some target practice here in the forest. Use this path here. God damn, what's that? This is another target practice here. So I don't know. 
I thought old Saxons were coming back, but and a way, think I better hop off. Take care.